Okay, welcome to Thursday. We're doing multiplication. That's exciting. Unfortunately, we have an issue that we'll deal with today. I gave you a heads up in email. There's two things that make people upset, especially in math classes. One is what happened last time on Tuesday, where there's this mix of some stuff is very concrete. Here's how to write things on the paper to do subtraction. And then other stuff is very up in the air and conceptual. Here's what factors are. Let's play a game where you have to think about which factors have been claimed and so on. And going back and forth between a concrete process and a kind of in the clouds conceptual thing can make some people's brains kind of go, ah, it's like you're, you're jerking in a car and swerving too much. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that we also have all of this Rumi's and Zumi's tech stuff going on only makes it worse. And that's like another layer of aggregation. Yeah. aggregation. So thank you for being patient. In this day, tonight, we're going to be aggravating again, but for a different reason. I'm going to teach you three different ways to do multiplication. The third one is maybe cool and maybe stupid. We're not going to pay much attention to it. No one else does it, but it's mm -hmm. kind of a brain exercise one just for the sake of that. The first two are important. There's a traditional style of multiplication that we were all taught if we're kind of older. And then there's this new version that uses like a box shape that they are teaching kids today in school. And so I want to teach you both. And there's a couple of reasons for that. <laughs> One is the box shape is better for helping you understand algebra. So someday when you're in math D or E, then your teacher will probably do something like this box shape mm -hmm. to teach you how to multiply things with letters. Oh. And if you've seen the box shape before, then that will be easier. Mm -hmm. The other is that a lot of us have kids that are going to school today, and they're gonna come home and say, help me with this homework. I have to multiply using a box shape. And if you haven't seen it before, you don't know what they're talking about. So just so that you can kind of participate in the community more than we're doing then. So um, no one is going to ever ask you, here's a multiplication program problem, and please do it in three different ways. So your real job is just to pick which one way to know how to do. And um, then your other part of your job is to be able to follow along with any of them because who knows what your next teacher will use and you want to be able to follow along while your teacher is doing stuff on the board. So whichever methods you don't like, you don't have to actually use them, but you should be able to follow along with someone else uses them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, it will be frustrating because a lot of people like saying, just teach me one way, don't show me all these other ways, that's just confusing. So thank you in advance for being patient with that. Okay, um, let's see, I need to move this down. Okay. Up, up again. You're covering my table. Usually, the most frustrating things uh, when you try to explain things, it's like when you explain the, like something, how to do it, but in a different manner, but it's like super similar to the, how you just explained the other. At least these are pretty different. Yeah. So I just didn't know if you knew that part of. Okay. Um, can I hide favorites so I don't have to have that line using up things? Um, Oh, my God. I think you can only click an What? I think you can only click an Okay. Oh, well, we're wasting space. Uh, okay, so last time we had a factor game. We never really did the subdivy game, but that's all okay. We'll move on to what's more relevant for us right now. So let's do the warm up because this is a nice one. You have a box and we have a bunch of numbers, one through nine. 
we want to pick four of the line numbers. So maybe one goes over here, right? If we put one digit in each box, say I just pick one, two, three, and four, then if we add them going down, what do we get going down? What's 12 plus 34? Well, two plus four is six. One plus three is four, so we get 46. And then if we add them to the right, what's 13 and 24? That's a strange way to look at it, but do you see how this is 13 and 24? I'm going that way. So then we get 37. And I want to add things up so that our two numbers here add up to 100. So, so far we're at 6 and 7, 37. And 46, 6 and 7 is 13. And then 3 and 1 and 4 is 8. So we're at 83. So we need to get a little bit bigger than what we've done so far. So I will erase my writing. And you can move these numbers, or, whoops, numbers around and see if you can get it. So when you add, oh, add sideways and add top and bottom, that it comes out to 100. So we're trying to get 100? Yep. How long? You want the, the number over here and the number down there to add up to 100. Okay. I'll bring everyone to me so you can have the right Zoom and stuff. So both sides have to be up to date, right? Yeah. Well, start to sort of trial and error. It's not going to be something you can just stare at it and figure out. <laughs> Are we trying to go with like a times tables or a or add addition? We're adding. It's always adding up and down. Okay, let's test this out. So stop moving them around. If I'm adding down, five and nine makes 14. So I put the four and carry the one. And then eight and seven and one makes 16. So we get 164. So that's too big. That's more than 100, even without whatever comes over here. So too big. Try smaller numbers, especially the 80 and the 70 were kind of huge. Not good. Let me one other number. Let's just put in something small. What if we put the one in? Is that any good? So let's try this. So 12 and 50, 12 and 75. So if I add those up, two and five is seven. One and seven is eight. No carrying there. Now I'm going to go sideways. So my numbers are 17 and 25. So what happens when I add up those? Seven and five is 12. I would carry, and then I get 42. So 17 and 25 is 42. But when I add 42 and 87, I'm going to go over 100. So again, this seven is pretty like that, big. I didn't know that. You had to like put in four blocks. Yeah, you have to put four blocks in there. So let's move the seven out of the way and try something smaller and see what happens. And what was our number last time? It was over 120. So we're bigger by quite a bit. Remembering to do attendance. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, well, 80 and 82 and 45 is going to be more than 100 right away, so that's going to be too big. I think I figured it out. What is it? 86 uh, plus 14. 86 and 14. So let's leave the A. Why is it? 86 and 14. And this game stays tied at two. Okay, so if I add them down, six and four is ten. And also the great Seattle. And eight and one and one is ten. So that adds up to a hundred. So in that part, Brittany is quite successful. But we also want to add them this way. So 81 and 64, if we add up those, then we get five, eight and six would be 14, 145. So if we add up 145 and the 100, then we're getting 245, so much too big. So Brittany was great with getting the down direction to 100, but that's not the goal. The goal is to get both things to 100. Both things, like, yeah. Well, so I'm going to stop for now. This isn't a great one to do cooperatively, as you can tell. We're sort of fighting over the little color pieces. Um, but maybe you can do this at home and figure it out. OK, we want to talk about arithmetic. I'm about to show you how to do some multiplication in different ways, um, but let's just do a little bit of a game to get our brains used to arithmetic first. So this is a great thing to practice for the GED, to have something that uses lots of kinds of arithmetic at once. Too often in life, we're just only doing addition for a while because we're doing our checkbook or something like that. So this is a, a great way to warm up our brain. Okay, we're going to have some dice. Are you going to be our dice roller again? Yeah. <laughs> you so really need get one color from the colorful ones, and then get four six sides from here. The colorful ones take a twenty side. A twenty sided? Yeah. Uh, I can't see trend. Okay, so. Well, he's going to roll a 20-sided die this time, and that's going to give us a number that's like the target we're trying to get to. We played a game of getting to 21. In this game, the number we're trying to get to keeps changing. And then she's going to roll four six-sided dice. Yeah, we have to wait for the truck. So we'll roll four six-sided dice and get those numbers. So let's say we rolled an 18 for our target number, and we rolled four threes. How could we put threes together to get to 18? And we can do any kind of adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. So one answer is if we do three times three with these two threes, that gets us to nine. And if we do three times three with those two threes, that also gets us to nine. And then if we add those together, then we have a 9 plus a 9, and that gets us to the 18 that we want. Can I have a couple of dice just to look at? Sure. Yeah, you can go get some dice. You're here. So that's kind of the thing we're doing. And... Um, I thought there was a warm-up when we were practicing this, but I guess not. Okay. So over on the side, we have a game board for the invisible fairy face. And that's the game we're going to play. And we can't see each other's game boards because our fairies are invisible. So I'm going, everyone's going to start on one. I'm sorry, you start on start. And then you roll one die to see where you move to. So roll just a six-sided die for me as this example. 
three, three. So if I was red, I could start on three. Did I make these a little smaller so they don't hang off so much? Okay. So put them on start. Oh, red three. Okay, so red is on three. Now I'm going to on my turns roll four dice. So roll four dice. Tell me what the numbers are. Uh, three, two, three, two. Three, two, three, and two. Mm -hmm. So I want to use all those together to get to the space I'm on. Uh, ah, the 20 second was the warm up. Ignore the 20 second. Okay. okay. Can I put these numbers together and get to three? Um, sure, I can do that. So I have two minus two is zero. So I have used up the twos and I'm at zero. Zero times three, anything times zero is zero. Have you heard that one? Yep. So now zero times three is still zero. I've used up that three. And then when I add three, I get to three. I've used up. So I've used all four numbers and I've got to where I am. So then I get to roll a six sided die and keep moving. So maybe I roll a four and I would go one, two, three, four. If I can't make my number, then I make any other number I want. And then my fairy throws a rock at that number. And if anyone is there, they have to move backwards. So we can compete a little bit that way. So don't, uh, so keep track of where your fairy is, but don't, um, don't tell us too much. So first, let's do some practice. That's what the 20th I did was for, and I was confused. Um, so roll the 20th I did and tell me a number, and we're all cooperatively going to try and get to it. 17. 17, okay. So our goal is 17. And what four numbers do we have from the six I did dice? Roll the four six I did dice. We'll see what number we're getting. Five, six, two, and two. Five, six, two, and two. Okay, what I actually want to do, come to think of it, is grab these numbers here. Yeah. So five, six, two and another two. Mm -hmm. So how can I put those together to get to 17? It doesn't always work, but it works surprisingly often. Can we put together those? Five and six gets us 11. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, oh, don't be good. I could do five times two is 10, plus six is 16, plus two more is 18. I'm close, but I'm not there. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to get to 17 using these four numbers. Um, Does anyone see a solution? I'm not seeing. I could do six times two is 12, plus five more to 17, but then this two isn't used yet, and I have to use all four. Or you could do a two times zero. But there's no zeros. Damn. I could do two minus two and get a zero, uh, but I'm not sure how that helps me. Yeah. And that could get me to 11, one. So I can't create a zero. I can't create a number. Okay, so I think we just can't do it this time. Okay, so Chloe, give us another bunch of numbers. Two, two, five, and six. Two, two, five, and six. And what's our goal number? Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen is a lot easier than seventeen. Okay, two, two, five, and 
The same. The same number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I was gonna say that's the same. That's the same number. But yeah. can we get to 15 with those numbers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, add them all up when we get to 15. Okay, that was easy. Let's try it again. <laughs> Uh, six, six, four, and two. Six, six, four, and two. <laughs> and what's the target number? Four. Four. Oh, sorry, five. Five. Okay, so the target number is five. That's that. So we obviously can't just add them up. That's a lot more than five. How can we use these numbers to get to five? I have a six. If I could make all of these a one, I could do six minus one is five. Can I put those together to make one? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I can make five. I can, I can. I'll do six divided by two. First, I take the four over here. So what's six divided by two? Story. Three. So if I put these together with division, I can get a three. Then I can say four minus three is a one, right? Okay. And then six minus that one gets me to five. There you go. There you go. It's fine. It's very cool. Interesting what are you doing? If I wanted to write that all at once. I could, but that's not really part of what we're doing. I could write six, whoops, <laughs> with the pen. I could write six minus four minus six divided by two. Ooh, boy. I make a long, complicated thing, but that's, complicated. that's not what we're doing, so don't worry about that. Do you want to do one more or just jump to the game? Come on. Oh, I'm stretching. Um, cool. no, do you want to do one, you want to do one more like this, or do you want to start playing the game? Let's try starting to play the game. Okay. So if you are at home in Zoom, then you're just going to keep track, maybe on a paper, maybe in your head, of what space you are on. Um, and we only have four players. So why don't we say that red... Is it okay if I put Betty and Brittany on a team together? Yes. Okay, so red is Betty and Brittany. You want to be by yourself or just one man? Okay, what color are you, Gavin? We're red. You're red. Is it okay if he takes red? Yes. Okay, what color are you, Betty and Brittany? Yellow, green, or blue? I'll take blue. If we beat them, hopefully we don't have a letdown. John and Jody, what color are you of the ones left over? Well, what do you want here? Uh, well, no, I wanted what Gavin took. I wanted red. Uh, Red's my favorite color. Next time you can be red. I didn't even know I took the red. Honestly, I just thought to myself, right now, I want red. <laughs> So My maybe, second choice by, by Betty and Whitney took it would be blue. I don't want to be yellow or green. <laughs> well, I mean, green is a, there's like a lot of plants. Okay, I'll pick green for you just because it's a little easier to see. Okay. Well, then I'll take yellow then. <laughs> no, you and Sean are together. Okay, uh, actually, I'll be yellow because I think having me be a demonstration. Will be good. So I'll go first again so you see how this works. So I roll one die. We can each have our own dice. Why don't you roll for the uh, zoomies? zoomies. Yeah. Oh, you have lots of dice. Okay. Yeah. So I will roll my four dice and the numbers I get are two, three, three, and five. So let me go grab those and move them over here. So, so 
So how do I use, oh, I'm sorry, first I roll one die and I have to get to my starting spot. So my starting spot is actually four. So I want to use two, three, three, and five to get to this my five. If I left behind, here five, yes, I left behind. Okay. So how do I use two, three, three, and five to get to four? Um, I want to get to four because that's where I am. These are what I have. Ah, I see. So two plus three is five. Five divided by five is one, because any number divided by itself is one. And then one plus three gets four. So I get to roll another die and I roll the three, so I move up three, one, two, three. If it was your turn, don't tell us where you move to, keep that secret. With your second move, you keep to yourself? Yeah, second move, you keep to yourself. Okay. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Let's start at the top. So Betty and Brittany, first one die for where you're going to be starting. Five. Five, okay. And what four numbers do they have? Five, six, one, and three. Five, six, one, and three. So can you two figure out how to get to five with these four numbers? Six minus five. Six minus five is one. It goes one. Um, one plus one plus one. One plus one is two. Plus three. Plus one. Okay. Yeah. So five. now we have to figure out how to communicate to them secretly where they are. Do you have a six-sided die, either of you, at your house? Uh, I do. But I, I have do. Six. I can get yeah. one. Okay. okay. Yeah, no rush. Get one and then roll it, and then you'll know where you are, but we won't. Okay. You're somewhere five. You've moved somewhere up here. If you roll the six, you could be as far as 11. And I'll kind of put you to the side to know where you're not there anymore. Okay, red is Gavin. So roll one die to start with. See where you really start. Maybe because we can't start on start. We don't. You don't get a. No, you don't get a twenty sided. Just the four. Of them. Yeah. So roll one six sided. So what is your first goal going to be? Do I say what I get? Yeah, this time you do. So I can. Um, I roll a three. So you are on three. Okay, now roll all four six-sided dice. See which number is you have to work with. Okay. Do I say those numbers? Yes. Okay. Got three threes and a five. Three threes and a five. Okay, so you have a few choices now with your three threes and a five. You could get to three, and then you move forward, a secret amount. If you get to seven, you throw a rock at my fairy, and I'd have to go backwards. Or you could throw a rock at some number between six and 11, and hope to hit the Bert, Betty Brittany team, but we don't know where they are. So they're in this it's probably safest to get to three and move you forward if you want. Yeah. Um... So I just solve the problem. And yeah, then you want to move but somehow six. smash all four of these together with arithmetic and get to three. Give you a hint? No, it is for okay. Well, while he's thinking, let's have Sean and Jody start their turn too. Because so roll one six-sided dice. 
don't keep it secret. This is just sort of where you're really starting. What? Five. Five. So you're on the five. Okay. And then what are your four numbers? Five, four, and five. Five. And, and, and another five. Five, four, another five. What's the fourth thing? And five. Three fives. Three fives. Three fives and a four. Okay. Same thing. If you can get to five, then you will get to move forward. If you get to seven, I move backwards. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let you aim at Gavin because official legal is before you, so he's not going to be there anymore. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking at um, hmm. five, five divided by five is one. You could take two fives and get a one out of it. Yeah. And then I don't, I can't see a point of tab. I could say, uh, if I can say five subtract by four, it's like that's like a batter. I think that's how we need one, and it gets me two ones. So my dad is one and one, that'd be two. So yeah, it's not gonna work. So I got a bunch of fives. So, you know, you want to hint? Sure. It's the same hint I was about to give Gavin, actually. Using subtraction, you can always put two numbers that are the same together and get a zero out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that worked. That worked. So I'll say, say five subtracted by five is zero. And then I said, then that's just zero subtracted, but uh, uh, zero multiplied by four is still zero. Zero, and I add the five. Yeah, and then you add the five. So you've gotten to your five. So secretly, roll a die and don't tell us. And you are in the same situation as Betty, but you're, so you're somewhere we, bigger than five. Can we create a zero now? You can create one the way Sean just did, of three minus three is zero. Okay. And that's how you can get your first zero. And now you want to get rid of this five. Yeah. So how do you get rid of a five using a zero? Uh, we already used those threes. We've used them, but they've turned into a zero. Three minus three is zero. Oh, oh, okay. So you have a zero to work with now. Okay, I understand. So should I move? Uh, you don't move. Just we know you're somewhere between five and eleven. Keep track of it secretly, so we don't know. Should I say where I gonna go? Well, let's let's finish getting to three. Here, okay. Do three, right? So three minus three is zero. Yeah, and then and zero then times five, five yeah. stays zero, yeah. and then you add three and get to three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So roll six sided die. Don't tell us. Just one. Or just one. Oh. So you'll be somewhere between four and nine. So keep track of where you are. If you roll the one, you'd be at four. And if you roll the six, you'd be at nine. You're somewhere in there, but we don't know. We just know you figured that that's good. Okay, so that was everybody. So I'm gonna go again. I'm at seven. <laughs> First turn, so I don't have to roll a single die to start with. I just roll my four dice, see what I get. Three, three, two, and four. Three, two, and four. So I need to get to seven because that's where I am. Well, three minus two is one. Three plus four is seven, and seven times one stays seven. Cool. So I will roll a die because I'm a teacher. I'm not secret, and I can roll terribly. I only roll a one, so I'm at eight. There, I. Yeah, I got really shitty loves. Okay, well, don't tell us because then we know where to throw rocks at you if you wanted. What? Wow. Yeah. You can't predict, predict fate like that. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so Betty and Brittany, let's Maybe. move blue. Roll the four dice. Oh, I'm rolling four dice, not one? Uh, or we can have Chloe roll them for you if you want. Up to you. Okay. Sure. Okay. Three, one, two, four. Three, one, two, and four. Okay. 
Now, Brittany knows where this blue pawn is. Have you whispered to Br Br Betty in chat? Um, no. So what am I supposed to do? Roll my dice that I have? Yeah, but first, one moment, let me, so in chat, can you see my chat window? No, you can't. One moment. Do, 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 stop, share, um, share screen, share all of screen. Can you see my chat now? No, Zoom is silly and hides the chat. That's no good. Anyway, if you know in Zoom chat. I can, I can send everyone. a message only to her so in the chat. So send one in chat only to her to tell yeah. her who we're on. So you both can work together and get to that number. So these were your numbers. One, two, three, four. Okay. You want to send a number that you two know, but we don't. Can you reveal the where you're at that for? Yeah, if you need help from us to get your numbers, and you can say, okay, I'm at five. Everyone help me get five like that. But okay, so the number we're trying to get to though is the number that I'm rolling, right? And then secretly telling her. Yeah, it's, it's whatever is more than five that you roll, right? Because you were on five. So if you roll the one at the end of your last turn, you'd be on six. If you roll the two, you would move two and be on seven. If you had rolled a three at the end of your last turn, you'd be on eight. If you rolled a six, you'd be all the way on 11. So we're not sure where in this area of the board you are. Okay. But you should be telling Betty in chat something between six and 11. Okay, we got it. Okay, how do you use the four numbers to get to your secret number? Mm. Which won't be secret anymore, but that's fine, because once you get it, then you move on. Okay. Uh, hold on, I'm still trying to work it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you want me to tell you working the problem that's on the board? Yeah, you have a one, a two, yeah. and a four to work with. So what do I do? So, and I'm trying to get to five? You're trying to get to something that's- Okay. Six. That's, that's what yeah. I'm confused about is like telling you guys this and then I don't understand how it's gonna be secret if I tell you. Because once you use these four to get it, then you're going to mm -hmm. have a six sided die at the end of your turn and keep moving. Okay. And then so that, then it's four plus three four is plus seven, seven. And okay. then two minus one equals one. Okay. So, so you were on eight, and seven plus one is eight. So now you're not on eight anymore. You're moving along. So roll secretly one die, and you're somewhere between nine or one, two, three, four, five, six, 14, right? See how this works? Yeah. So you're more than eight. I'm gonna put you off the board on eight so we know you're not on eight, you're just more than eight. We'll play a little bit more and then take a break at seven and then do the different ways to multiply on paper. Okay, so Gavin, roll four dice, and we'll set aside numbers for you. And you two roll your four dice, and we'll set up numbers for you. Got three, five, one, and two. Three, five, one, and two. Okay, and what did you two get to work with? Six, one, three, two. Six, one, three, two. Six, one, three, two. Six, one, three, two. So we need a copy of this one. Okay. 
So you each know what your target numbers are. We don't, we just know Gavin's is something more than three and you do have something more than five. If you want to tell us what it is, we can give you hints about how to get to it, but try and work on it secretly by yourself first. Gavin has a one, two, three, and five to put together. You two have a one, two, three, and six to put together. Oh. So six strengthened by one, five, six minus one is five. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, three, three plus two is five. And then, then one minus um, one minus five is five. No, no, um, no, times, 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 times five. Well, you have, you made a five and a five, right? Here's yeah, a five. And I take that, and take that one, uh, where's it, that five? Dude, I didn't have to get this how I do that. Um, yeah, how to do this. Okay. Are you allowed to make double digit numbers, please? No, you can't just say one, two is 12. Uh, or just, uh, I, I don't know. I yeah, I like made those into like a double number though. No, I can't. Oh, I got it. I got it. I think I think I got it. Think it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of, it's got me stopped. Okay, well, you were green. Tell us what number green is actually on because it's not five. No, you were on five, but then you moved forward. And so you rolled a five. So we're trying to get to 10. But then you got it because six and one was five and three and two is five. And this five plus this five. Makes yeah. So I got yeah. it. So you did get it. You just didn't know you got it. <laughs> okay. I didn't know what I was doing. So okay. So you're on ten right now, but yeah. now you're secretly rolling a die, and you're going to be somewhere between eleven and sixteen. Okay. All right. I'll roll that one secretly. Okay. And back to Gavin. He's somewhere more than three. Do you want to tell us what number you're on? Um, I'm on nine right now. You're on nine. So you rolled well. You got a six. Okay. So can you use these numbers to get a nine? Okay. So now I have to try and make those into a nine. Right. And then you can move on past the nine. Okay. Even if it's not your turn, you can be staring at these numbers and think, how could I smash them together to make a nine? I can't hear anything with that bus going by. So look at the dice. I thought one, two, three with the one die. One, two, three, and five. How can you put them together? Oops, for F. How can you put these together to help Gavin and make a nine? You can put Five plus three is eight. Five plus three is eight. And one minus two is one. Or two yeah. minus one, right? The big one minus the small one. Two minus one is one. Yeah. And then the and add then... the one plus the eight makes nine. Yeah. Are you okay with getting that help, Gavin? Yeah, I'm sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. On a, he'd roll another die and he'd be somewhere up between 10 and 15. Okay. I think we should stop. You know how the game works. All right, so this is the best thing I know to do a little bit before the GED. And if you my head feels like it's going to explode trying to play this game. You, yeah, there you go. Okay, all right. If you do this like every other week between now and your math. Oh. All right. I want some of this. I want some of this. That was a loud motor thing. But you can see how this game is asking you to use more than one type of math at a time. Yeah. You have to add and subtract and multiply and divide, and you're not sure if it can be helpful and so on. So that, yeah, my head feels like it's going to explode trying to do this. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks like we didn't need three extra copies of that. Okay. Now that's too many. That's too many. Yeah. So we'll take a short break, and then we'll do the three methods for multiplying. And waffles. <laughs> <laughs>
That's too big. That is too many. Okay, welcome back after break. The warm-up thinking challenge for To Doodle 21, we're not going to do. This is a great little thing to think about by yourself, but it's not much of a cooperative one. Um, why isn't that hiding? I think, there we go. So, but to introduce it, six is an unusual number, because if I add up all of its factors, I get six. So one times six is six, two times three is six, and when I add up one plus two plus three, then I get to six. I can't add up six, because obviously it's not gonna get to six if I add six. But lots of numbers are not like that, right? Eight, the factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. And if I add up the one, two, and four, I don't get to eight. Or 12, the factors of 12 are one, two, three, four, six, and 12 because one times 12 is 12, or two times six is 12, or three times four is 12. But if I add up all the non-12 factors, do I get to 12? No, I don't. So can you find another number that's special like six? And when you add up all of its factors other than itself, you get to that same number. So, okay, but as I did mention in our sort of uh, prologue, we're about to do three different ways to multiply. Your job is just to understand what I do and pick your favorite way. So we're going to start by comparing two different ways to multiply. And can I put a little bigger? On the left, we have the more old-fashioned way. Um, And I will narrate how that works. If this is new to you, feel free to holler. I'm just kind of assuming it's a slightly boring review. I'm doing 31 times 25. So 1 times 5 is 5. And then 3 times 5 is 15. Now that 15, I've scooted over. Make that not quite so big. But there was a scoot there, right? I don't put the 15 here. I scoot it over and put it here. Why do I do a scoot when I write the 15? Anyone know? Not me. Hmm. It just makes, makes sense. Oh, makes sense. Makes sense to me. I'll give you a hint with a kind of confusing puzzle. So this number here is not a three. It sure looks like a three, but it's not a three. What number is that? 31. 30, right? That three is really a 30. So we took a little one. So if I'm doing 30 times five, it's not 15, it's 150. Mm -hmm. Right? So the zero in 30 is invisible everywhere. Yeah, because we took the one way from that to make 15, right? Um, we did three times five is 15, but it's really 30 times five is 150. This one doesn't matter. Okay. So the scoot came because this isn't a three, it's a 30 with two digits. And so we need to say that the zero that was there for 30, there's an extra zero when we multiply. Let me go back and do that a different way. If I wrote on the board 30 times 5, that's 0 times 5 is 0, 3 times 5 is 15. And being the zero so that. counting by 30s, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, mm -hmm. most people look at that and say, ah, oh, we do three times five is 15, and then the zero just sort of hangs out at the end. Yeah, it's extra. And, and, uh, and if there was like a, a single digit number, we could just add that at the end, right? Right. So that's what happened. Okay. The one times five is the single digit number, the blue one that we're adding at the end. So we, we scoot the green 15 because this 30 has a, a zero hidden like behind the one. Okay. 
because it can't we can't make it a 30 i mean 31 right yeah. we can't multiply by 31 all at once we have to multiply by one and then by 30. and at the very end we'll put the one at the yeah. then we do two times one is two and that's also scooted over mm -hmm. for the same reason because this is not a two it's a 20. Mm -hmm. so 20 times one the zero is kind of hiding off at the end, right? So the one is for a different part of the equation, right? This the one with the 31? Yeah, but it's not after 31, it's a third. It's, but it's, the, the one is still there. The one is still there. Okay. Okay. So that we just did the two times one is two, but with a scoop because it's really a 20. And finally, we do two times three to six, and that's all of the setup part in the middle. And then at the end, we add it. Five and zero is five. Five plus two is seven. Six plus one is seven. Okay, so it's like an X. It's sort of like an X. Yeah. So the first part is like an X, and then we scoot. It's more like a, a slanted V, right? We do that, and then we do this. But yeah. So that's the old fashioned way. Um, Everyone okay with that so far? Uh, yes. yes. Hmm? Is it done? Oh, I'm sure it, it is. is. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a kid in school these days, they're learning something different. Mm -hmm. Just unplug it, it won't go up all the way. So what they're learning is this rectangle method. So let's look and see what's happening. They took the 31 and they separated it and wrote it as 30 plus one across the top. Mm -hmm. And they took the 25 and they separated it and wrote it as 20 plus five on that side. And then they match up things, kind of like they're playing the battle chip game, if you've done that. So 30 times 20 is 600. Because mm -hmm. three times two is six, and there's two zeros hanging out. Zero. It's by the, the last part of time. Yeah, so if you have numbers of zeros at the end, like 30 times 20, you can multiply the parts that aren't the zeros. Mm -hmm. Three times two is six. Mm -hmm. And then the zeros just kind of stick okay. on at the end. Okay. Same yeah. thing we did here. Three times five is 15, and the zero just goes to the end. Okay. Okay. Um, it's because we're counting by tens, <laughs> not counting by ones. Okay, so that was 30 times 20 is 600. Then we have one times 20 is 20. Then the next box is 30 times 5 is 150. We that over here. And then the last box is one times five is five. Are you with me with all of those four pieces? For the most part. For the yeah. most part, we'll do more examples like this. It will get better. Then when you're done, you don't have an answer. You just have four parts in the box. Yeah. So we have to add them all up. So 600 plus 20 plus 150 plus five, and we'll get to 775. If you want to see me, add, see, see me add them up, I can. Let's write it out better. 620, 150, and five. Line up everything nicely, right? The ones column has to match up. So five, seven, and seven. So the I like I like more the old fashioned. We usually like whatever we were taught first. I, I like the yeah. old, but I'm an old bogey. Well, I, mm -hmm. so, I don't like old fashioned either. either. Oh, okay. it should be so. So it's, let's do a few. Let's more, do a few more. more like no, I mean I, just, I like what you used. I like what you were doing. It's kind of neat. I like it. Yeah. So let's do more like this. Um. I'm more yeah, excited. Right? Yeah, yeah, I don't like more fashion. It was not just as simple as that. Like, I, I was taught fashion, but like 
the this new way is just a better way for me to learn it, I think. I mean, I, I haven't gone like down like <laughs> the system of it, but I mean, I kind of get like the system, what he's talking about is just but not, I, not a bit, not as. But I know what you mean. I was taught a word faster too, and I like the newer stuff. <laughs> No, it's not letting me copy that. Okay, I'll have to build a grid. Are you okay? <laughs> I can build the grid. That's okay. <laughs> I'll have to start. Okay, so if somebody make up a two digit number, let's do this again. 100. 100 is not a two digit number. Oh, yeah, that's right. 100. That's still three digits. How about one thousand? That's four digits. How about one million? That's thirty. Thirty. Okay, there, there we go. Thirty. Else. Thirty times one. Uh, sixty. Thirty times sixty. This will be interesting because it's all tens, right? So if I do this the old-fashioned way, then zero times zero is zero. That was going down here. Then three times zero is also zero. Then I move down. I fill in a zero just as a placeholder, right? Mm -hmm. This one that was there. Mm -hmm. And then I do six times zero. Oh, that's still a zero. Whoops, wrong color. Uh -huh. And then finally, I have three times six is 18. I have something that's not not all zeros, right? And then when I add them all up, I get 1,800. Everyone with me for that one? We could also do our memory trick of, well, three times six is 18. If you write that, and then there's two zeros that go after it. You can use the shortcut. If we do the box method, then we have 30 and nothing. Mm -hmm and 60 and nothing, because these aren't like 35 or 62 or anything, right? Mm -hmm. So 30 times 60, three times six is 18 with the two zeros. It's just assuming you know that shortcut. And then these are all going to be zeros because zero times stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you add them all up, all you have is the 1800. So the box method doesn't really do much because it's asking you to know the memory trick to multiply your two numbers anyway. <laughs> okay, let's make it a little more interesting, though. Um, let's do another one. Tell me two more two-digit numbers. This time they should have a tens and elevens, and not only tens. Uh, so two, two more numbers to multiply. If you want one of them to be in the hundreds, we could do a three digit, that's fine. We can be advanced. <laughs> Should we do 13 point? No, no, no decimals. That's another lesson. Uh, okay, 13 times what? 28. 28? Yeah. Right. Okay, 13 times 28. How we write it here, is 13 is 10 plus 3, and 28 is 20 plus 8. So the first thing I do is 3 times 8. If I'm doing it this way, I write 24, and I'm going to be carrying a little bit. Right? So it's like 24, but this 2 is going to be carried. If I'm doing it here, 3 times 8 is 24, and I just put it in the box. Then I do 1 times 8. So 1 times 8 is 8, but we were carrying 2. So now we're up to 10. Whereas if you're on the side, we just did 10 times 8. And um, is 80. Then we have a place value 0 here. Then we do 2 times 3 is 6. If we were doing it on this side, 20 times 3 is 60. 
And then finally, two times one is two, or if we were doing it here, 20 times 10. Well, two times one is two, and there's two zeros hanging out. Can you see the four numbers, even though they are not quite the same? We have a 24, but part of that 20 went into 100 on this side, or on the other side, it stayed an 80 and a 20 separate. That's the most different we've seen so far. 60 is happening in both. And 200 is happening in both. It's just that this 2 doesn't look quite as much like a 200 as a 60 on top of it. Yeah, there's more imagination instead of trying to. And then no matter what we do, we add them up. 4 times plus 0 is 4. 0 and 6 is 6. 2 and 1 is 3. Or if we're on this side, then we had a 200, a 60, an 80, and a 24. And when we add them up, 4, 8, and 2, and 6 make 16. 2 and 1 makes 3. So same answer. Does everyone have one method that they like and are right. somewhat comfortable with, actually? So is you have to use less, you know, brain skills to like, you know, figure. I mean, when you're doing the the not the box side, the traditional side, you're like using a whole bunch of imagination as you're trying to imagine mm -hmm. the actual problem. Well, the box one, you don't have to use a whole bunch of imagination because you're, you know. Physically drawing it out. Right. So things like carrying the two, you don't have to worry about. Yeah, because you're just putting it into this physical. Okay, well, last time we did a game by Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland with painting the roses. It wasn't the best game, but we're back to Lewis Carroll. He invented a third way to multiply because he didn't like either of these methods. So he said, you know what? If I take the top number, 31. We're going back to 31 times 25 is 775. If I take the 31 and I write it backwards on a piece of paper, watch what happens. So we're going to start by sliding it this way. And now we have the 1 and the 5 lined up. So 1 times 5 is 5. That's the same blue 5 we had over here and here, but 1 times 5 is 5. Then I'm going to slide my paper a little more, and I have three times that five is 15. That's the same green 15 that we had as a 15 on this paper or a 150 over here, right? And then the paper's gone. We've done the one times the five and the three times the five, so we've used up the five there. So now we'll take the paper again, and we'll look at the 2 and 25. So 2 times 1 is 2. And because we're on the 2's column, we're going to put it under the 2 instead of under the 5. And then 3 times 2 is 6. And that's the same 2 and 6 that we saw as 20 and 600 over here. And then you add it up, and you get 775 again. Uh, so the disadvantage is you have to have the strip of paper and slide it around. And everyone looks at you weird because they don't know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but it is kind of a cool thing. So if you like it, then go ahead and steal it and make it yours and have some top secret cool way to multiply. But most people look at this and say, oh, move right. on. So thank you, teacher. It's only fresh. <laughs> OK. On the right, we have 79 times 25. And all these numbers are going blah on top of each other. We have a 1400, but it's sort of overlapping the 180. And we have a 350, but it's kind of overlapping the 45. So let's fix that. So nine times five is 45. I'm just gonna take this five and zero 
And let's just get rid of the zero part because that's ugly. Oops. And then with the five and the four, what can I do so I'm not missing anything? What would I write normally? Nine times five is 45. We'd have a four up here. And then seven times five is 35. But that four, we have to carry and keep adding. So 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So we should add these, the five and the four, we should put together to make a nine. Everyone with me so far? Not really. Not really. Anyone with me? Not, not really. Not really? Okay, we can skip this if it's not working. But you can see on the left-hand side, what Gavin was saying is requiring imagination, is you keep having to add these overlaps. Overlapping the zero and the zero, that's nothing. Overlapping the zero and the eight, that's an eight. Overlapping the one and the four, five. that's a five. So there's all this overlap stuff that happens when you're doing the old fashioned. So that's yeah. all that this slide is pointing out. Is okay. Do the overlap if you're doing the old fashioned method. If you're doing the box, you don't have to. Okay. No, that you don't say it. Bye bye. Sounds good. Great for you, worse, dude. Yeah, and I want oh, you to be that kind of thing. Okay, so here's this thing. In any math class, so I don't care. there are students that love seeing most math problems can be solved using different problems, different methods. Why would you like seeing lots of different methods? One, if you can understand three methods, you feel three times as smart. Ta-da! Or I like picking things. That makes me feel good as a control free. If you show me three methods and I have to pick one of them, then ta-da, I get my favorite. I know there's not some like better secret method out there that no one's shown me. You've shown me all the methods and I get to pick one. And lastly, maybe you only knew one method, but the new one you like better. And so I'm like, hey, life is better. I got a better method. Right? At least so, I can still do it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one reason to see lots of methods. But it's also true that sometimes seeing more than one method is really annoying. Some students like to just focus on a single thing and practice it, and then they know it, and then they get faster, and then they pass the test, right? So that's a valid way to think. If you're doing group work, it's easier if everyone is only taught one method. If you try and do some problems together and some of you start drawing boxes and others start doing the old fashioned way, then it's harder to work together. And lastly, there are students that don't trust the teacher and they say, oh, he says today that on the test you get to pick either method, but you know, Really, he's going to make us do the box method and I hate that or something like that, which isn't a concern here because we don't really have a graded class. But you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. You've seen teachers like that before. So think about that. There will not be too many other things in Math B that have lots of methods like multiplying, mm -hmm. but there will be other things that we'll see more than one method of. Cool. So thank you again for your patience if you are someone that doesn't like lots of methods. I don't know how she will. I didn't know the box math, so then that should help me yeah. with the block. Okay, we don't have much time. Are we able to keep going? Do people need a quick stretch break? I want to stretch. I feel a little bit better condensed. Okay, so let's take fun. like a real quick two minute thing, check on your kids, grab a bite to eat, do a jumping jack, something like that, and then we'll come back. Well, that was decent, so I can't pause. Come on, then. Okay, welcome back after our break. I have a deck of cards. I'm going to pretend I have a superpower. Not a very interesting one, though. So my superpower is that I can take from a deck of cards any number I want. If I want to pick up just 10 cards, I can. If I want to pick up 20 cards, I can, like that. So I'm going to pretend I have four friends, and I'm going to start dealing out cards to them. I'm just right now testing it fits on the screen, so I've got that much space to work with. Okay. 
So pretend this isn't a normal deck of cards, but it's really big. It has 128 cards in it. It's magic. And I want to deal them out to four different people. If I deal out one at a time, we'll be here forever. I don't want to do that. That takes too long. So I'm going to think about place value. And I deal out 100 at a time to my four friends. I take 100 off the top, but only one person gets them. I don't have 100 more for the other people because I only had 128 to start with. So that's not going to work. So instead, I will count by tens. So I'll take 10 cards off, 10, 20, 30, 40. Then I go again, 50, 60, 70, 80. Then I go again, 90, This is like 100, 100, 110, 120. So I've dealt out 120 cards, 10 at a time, to my four friends. How many cards are left in my hand? Four, because I had 124, right? Can I deal out 10 more? No. No, not only I don't have 10 for even one person, but if I started, I, to be fair, I'd have to do 10 for all of them. Mm -hmm. And they don't have 40 more cards. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop. Then at the end, I deal out one card to each person, and then done. And then we're wondering how many cards does each person have? Did that make sense as a mm -hmm. thing to do? Watch right yeah. now? Okay, so now I'll go back to the computer and I'll put the screen on and we'll do that the screen. So well, you're just trying to... So... Okay, you need to go down and hide. Okay. So I have a hundred and a ten and a one if I wanted to act this out, but I was able to do it with actual cards, so that was nicer. If I was to write this like long division, what I would write was I have 128 cards in my hand, and I want to share them with four people. Can I put a number here and deal out 100 cards at a time? No, I need 400 to make everyone get 100 cards fairly. So I can't put a number there. So I'm just gonna skip that spot. How about the tens column? Can I deal out 10 cards to each person? Sure, that would be 10, 20, 40, right? Mm -hmm. Can I deal out another 10 cards to each person? Sure, that would be 50, 60, 70, 80. Can I deal out another 10 cards to each person? Sure, that would be 90, 100, 110, 120. Yeah. So I'm going to deal out 30 cards to each person, and that's 120 cards total. How we normally write that, is we put a three oops, here, and then we put three times four is 12 there. Mm -hmm. But what that really means, this three isn't a three, it's a 30. I dealt out 30 cards four times, and that's 120 cards. Mm -hmm. So each one of those tens was a 30. Right, each one, I was doing not three singles, but three tens. Mm -hmm. You saw me do that on the camera a moment ago, right? So that made all those go away. 12 minus 12 is zero. What that really means is out of 128 cards in my hand, 120 are now on the table. So I have eight cards left. Some people don't write this zero and instead write some sort of like coming down arrow or something like that. Yeah, it's all just all, all just style. And now I'm dealing one card at a time. Remember I had four cards in my hand? So I'll deal out one card at a time, one time to four people. Whoops, I'm writing 120. <laughs> I didn't. Silly me. <laughs> 
I was thinking 128 when I prepared this, but when I did it in front of you, it was 124, and now I messed it up and everything is terrible. I'm That's sorry. sorry. This 124, 124. It's a mile there. Mile there, but I shouldn't be confused. Anyway, not no, no, four. No, four. Sure. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tiny font. I couldn't read my own writing. <laughs> okay. So this is probably how you've seen it written. Does that look familiar to everyone? Yeah. 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 But again, so you don't have to write it that way. So, whoops. What I taught my uh oh. What I taught my kids when I was when they were trying to learn this was let's write it with more stuff. So you can write it as four goes into 124. That nothing fits with the hundreds. Mm -hmm. You don't put anything there. Mm -hmm. But maybe you don't know your time mm -hmm. table as well. So four times 10 is 40. And that's fine. I can deal out 40 cards, mm -hmm. 10 cards to four people. 124 minus 40 is now 84 cards left in my I think you drew you don't have to do this all at once. I think you drew it out really bad on that example, but you explained it really well. Okay. So now I'm going to deal out 20 cards. So I'm giving 10 cards to four people twice because I see this eight and go, oh, I know that 20 times four is 80. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to deal out one card to four people. And now I'm done. I have no cards left in my hand. And at the end, I have to add these all up and I get 31. So if you're willing to do an addition step at the top, which isn't really hard, then you can break down the multiplication. Right? You can just whittle away at it like dealing out cards. The long division we were all taught as soon as we have minimized our time tables perfectly. And we always know what's the biggest number that we can put up top. But there's no need to use the biggest number on the first try. If you guess something too small, you can just keep going. That still works. Okay, I could do more on the slides, but I think I just want to do more of this off on the side. So give me another long division problem to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 115. 115. And what's going into it? Five? Ten. Ten. That's not good. That's going to have a remainder. I don't really want to do remainders. Yes. Uh, no. Four. I know what I'm going to say. Why don't we do 215 and then have three go into it? Okay, so it has to be a number. Um, no, there's actually a secret I know that you don't. You are, but we'll talk about it in just a moment. I won't make you not know my secret. Okay, so I'll do three goes into 215, and I will do this in two different ways. First, I'm going to do it the way that I'm pretending I don't know my multiplication tables great. And then I will do it the official long division way, which assumes I do know my multiplication tables great. So does three go into two? In other words, can I deal out 100 cards from a pile of 215? Because no. oh, 100, 200, I don't have the third 100 to give to people. Okay. So nothing is going to go up above that two. Three goes into 21, which is really three goes into 210. Can I do that? Sure. Let's say I only have memorized my times tables up to five. So three times five is 15 with that zero at the end. That's part of a theme of today is, right? When you multiply three times five, the zero just hangs out, right? So three times five is 15 with a zero. I can subtract. Oh, but there's my bar. Five and zero be five? Five minus zero is still five. Yeah. And then what one by one minus, minus another one there in a five would be a six. One 
minus five I can't do. So I that changed, would be a six. So I changed this two into a one, borrowed to make eleven. Cool. And, and then that would be a six. Five, six. Yep. yep. So I have sixty-five cards left in my hand. Mm -hmm. I dealt out one fifty out of the two. So I'd say two minus one. Would that be zero? I wonder. So I, it became a one though. A one it because I borrowed. It doesn't look quite right here. Let me draw it. Better. It's a two, honey. I I but. So I took, I had this two, oh, and I said, no, the two is a one, and I borrowed and made this an 11, mm -hmm. and then 11 minus five is six, one minus one is zero. Oh, I get it. Now you have me confused, because if that was supposed to be a one, why did it show two? Yeah. <laughs> okay, can I keep going 10 at a time? Sure, I'm at 60. Yes. So I can do 20 more cards to each of three people. I have 65 cards in my hand, so 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 3 times 2 is 6, with a 0 at the end. Uh, five. Oh, no, I do have a remainder. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So then I can do 1 and give everybody 1 card, that means I have 2 at the end, so I add this all up, and I get 71 with a remainder of two. All right. Can you point to where you start with those numbers as you did those, or those um, formula, as you did that formula or a technique? Point where number, where you started and where you ended. Where, when I added up these three? To get the answer, you're gonna get it. I added up the 50 and the 20 and the one. So um, okay. everything on top of the long division thing. Okay. I can even make it. So it'd be, that stuff is where I got the 71. Okay. With a remainder of two from down there. If I was doing long division the official way, I have to know that seven is the right thing for this. Is there like, and, and then five, I would put a one, and then my remainder of two is there. But I didn't want to do one with the remainders. Well, okay. you don't want to do one because it's just more confusing. Some people haven't seen remainders. Okay. Oh, so I oh, get it in one because you took away, you took the two, you changed the two to one. So one, so one minus one would be zero. I get it now. Okay, so what I want to show you is where is it? <clears throat> where is it? There we go. This is the okay. This thing. Since it came up. <laughs> Yeah. In our discussion, let's put it on the board. On the Moodle board? So I added up things wrong in my head. I was, then for divisibility, things you probably have memorized is a number is divisible by two if it ends in zero, two, four, six, or in mm -hmm. even. So if it's mm -hmm. accounting by two number, then it ends in zero, two, four, six, or eight. If it's accounting by five number, then it ends in zero or five. So something like 10 is both divisible by two and divisible by five. Mm -hmm. right? If it puts something in front of it, it's still divisible by two and five because the last digit, the ones column, fits these patterns. Mm -hmm. And then finally, counting by tens is when it ends in zeros only. Mm -hmm. So the things you might not have heard, a number is divisible by three. If when I add up its digits, that's also divisible by three. So 1,410, if I add up one plus four plus one plus zero, I get to six. Does three go into six? Mm -hmm. Yes, so three goes into this big number also. A number is divisible by six if two and three both work. 
So this is even, it ends in two, so two works. And three goes into the sum of the digits. So I could say, what is six divided by this? And there'd be no remainder also. A number is divisible by four. If we just take the two digit number at the end and check that. So does four go into 10? No, if I count yeah. four as I skip over four, eight, 12. So four does not go into this. If I tried to do long division here, there'd be a remainder. Okay. And finally, a number is divisible by nine if the sum of its digit is divisible by nine. Does nine go into six? No. So yeah. if you try to do nine goes into this, there'd be a remainder. Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to do, but my brain was too tired a moment ago, was we were saying two, you would put 115 on the board. And I thought, wait, one plus one plus five is seven. I want three to go into this. I need it to be bigger. Let's change the one to a two. But two plus one plus five is still something that's not a multiple of three. Not at all. I should yeah. have made it 315, and then that we would have had no remainder. So but my brain I was still. able to like, you know, compress and file that this uh Are stuff right here, here and like memorize that I would still be able to get the problem solved the way it's the same. Yeah, this is not actually for today. This was just me explaining why I messed up and had a remainder. Because um, you're no one's gonna ask you, Gavin, make a long division problem with no remainder. So when do you actually use this when you're dealing with fractions? If anyone has ever showed you reducing fractions, somebody is going to give you a fraction, maybe something like um, you know, 54 divided by 108, and you have to reduce this. And, the, the... and if you don't know Oh, these rules, you're going to start with just this rule and say, well, I see they're both even. Let's divide top and bottom by two. And you're a little away at this, a little bit at a little bit. Whereas if you know these rules, then you can say, oh, when I add up this, I get nine. When I add up these, I get nine. So nine goes into both. So I could just do divided by nine top and bottom, and that's a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And maybe you even be good at this and say, oh, this is going to be a half because 54 is just half of 108. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> Fraction reducing is when you really need to know all these rules. So don't worry about the math. They're for another day, probably like math C. Okay. So that good. I got a question. So if I were to like solve the problem, so I have a remainder, mm -hmm. can you still solve the problem by doing that? Just like throwing the remainder away after the remainders are kind of not worth talking about. Because in real life, no one wants an answer of the remainder. They want yeah. this to be a fraction or a decimal kind of answer. Okay. And we're not quite ready to talk about that. So I was trying to make problems without remainders. So you wouldn't say, what about fractions and decimals? Oh, I yeah. Okay. You, but like, can you just have the problem being done with that? It's not even. Yeah, you erase that. that. And I would just leave the remainder. Okay. I'm running late. I'm sorry. But. Homework for the weekend. I haven't fixed up fractions yet, so don't try the fractions yet. But anything in multiplication and division, feel free to try it. As always, you're going to want to look at the nice textbook first and do a lot of practice with its cool videos and example problems. And then at the very end, do the My Open Math show that you got it. Don't jump to the My Open Math. Don't. No, don't don't start with the my open man. We're not waiting wait yet. He hasn't gotten around to no, getting no, it. No, for multiplication and division, it is ready. But the other part but is it doesn't. But, but the mouth, but the mouth is not the practice. The practice isn't. But yeah. for any topic, don't jump to my open math and try it first because it doesn't help you learn it. You're not sure if you're ready. So go to the books first, open the textbook, and then. When you're looking at the example problems, whatever they are, go away tools. Okay, since all the example problems have videos and check things like this one, then you actually learn 
to do my LSR mm -hmm. and get help if you need it. So do that for a bit first. And then when you're done, you can say, okay, I did 1.5 and 1.6 in the book. Now I'm ready to try the myopic math homework. Right. So, okay, so have a good weekend. Tomorrow there's office hours. Somebody wants that. I'll be here downtown. What time? What time? Let me double check syllabus. It says 1.30. And I'll be in Zoom also. So if you're only able to be in Zoom. And, and you also will be able on Saturday? And Saturday is fine. This weekend I'm not traveling. Okay. At 11? Oh, you're traveling again. So I'm traveling on the 27th, but I think the plane leaves later. I'm not sure if I'll have to cancel. So, so that weekend. weekend you're traveling? Yeah, I have to go to Arizona, sadly. Uh, it's Saturday at 11 